Okay, so this one I wanted to split up from the customized hotkeys and layout. Um, and this is going to be the viewport settings because they are often a little bit more important. So the viewport settings are the settings over here. I just wanted to walk through a few that I often use. One cool thing, if you press the button 7, you can see your poly count over here. And I will get back to this, I just want to already show you. So, the plus. Um, this is often for just restoring views and um, for your settings. So we, are, we have configure viewports. So let's just dive right into this one right away. Display performance. If you ever have textures or for example you have a plane with like a reference on it and it feels low resolution, make sure to set your display performance a lot higher. It of course depends on your PC. Like these are all 4K, so if you have uh, 200 4K textures, your PC or your 3 Max might run a little bit slow. Uh, Anti-aliasing, this is just that you, these jagged edges that you have over here, if you would set this very high and press apply, you can see that now they are perfectly smooth. However, um, the higher you set it, the harder it will be for your hardware to calculate. And I often work in scenes with millions of polys, so I wouldn't want to do that too high. Um, this stuff over here I never use, so I'm not going to try and explain to you what it is. Uh, we have a background over here we can choose. Remember how we changed the color of the background? Um, we can basically also choose if we want to have any other type of background, like a solid color. And you could set those colors in our customize. Um, but yeah, in this case, I'm not going to touch that. Layout, this will just show your layout. Basically, if you... Oh, I need to go out of this. If you press Alt-W, this is your layout. So we have a front, top, and left. If I then, for example, go to the front and press Alt-W again, I would go to that viewport. So basically, that's all what layout does. It will just allow you to set your viewport slightly different if you want to. Save frames. Save frames I don't use often. They are basically for cameras. If you go um, to perspective and show the save frames, these are your save frames. Now, if you then go back to your configure viewports, basically what save frames can do is um, you can add, here we press apply, see? This blue line, you can add save frames. And uh, this is handy if you are, for example, an animator. Or if you need to mimic a very specific view. I often, if I have a very specific view inside of Marmoset, I often use save frames just to mimic that exact format in here. In case it is not a 1920 by 1080 format. So that's, uh, that's all it for save frames. Um, I can just press show. Oh, I forgot that I can also turn it on and off here. Sorry about that. Region, I never use. I'm not going to try and explain. Statistics, I use often. Statistics are these things over here, when we pressed 7. If you go ahead, and what I always do is I turn on triangle count, and I turn on total plus selection, and then I press apply. So doing this, this means that it, that it will show you the total verts and polys and um, tris inside of the scene. For games, tris is important because this is what we count for the poly count often. However, it will also show you whatever you have selected. So if I would go and only select one vertice, you can see here, this cube or everything in the scene is eight vertices, but I only have one selected. Let's see, was there anything else? Uh, the rest I don't use. I don't use viewport and the steering wheels I also do not use. So I wouldn't know what they are. I never in eight years touched them. Over here, perspective, you can switch between your views, but you can see that most of these views have a shortcut. So you have U for orthographic, T uh, for top, L for left, um, on the R, R is not right, R is scale. Um, but yeah, basically, or you can just do R, W, and P for perspective. That's basically all you use that for. Cameras, if you have any cameras. Uh, the way that you can create cameras is all by pressing Ctrl C and Ctrl C will automatically create a camera. Then you can see here that now we have a camera or if I go back to perspective, you can see, see, I created a camera in location. Um, there should also be a button here, I believe. Oh no, wait, I think that was Unreal Engine 4 where it shows like a create camera here button. But anyway, like this, you can create a camera and I will show you another way later on on how to create a camera using our create box standard very easy uh, standard is what i always use however 
these are basically the render qualities. If you set this to high quality, it will also try and create like a shadow for you. If I would create another box, see? It will try and uh, calculate based upon your view, shadows and ambient occlusion. You can also have performance. If you have a very heavy scene, you can just do performance. Um, I don't know what DX mode is, but I'm going to stick with standard. Another cool thing is if you go to lighting and shadows, what you can do is you can also just turn on ambient occlusion and not turn on shadows. When you do this, it becomes like a custom mode. So now I should be able, if I give it a second, uh, normally this should work just fine. Uh, let's go to high quality and now let's turn off shadows. There we go. Okay, I don't know why it didn't work use extended, but normally you get this. So you can turn off shadows if you are in high quality. And um, it will just work. I probably just forgot like a setting. And now you just have like some ambient occlusion sitting always in there, which can look nice. And finally, the default shading. Um, here you can go for um, I, face sets I never use. But uh, the bounding box I use if my scene is so incredibly heavy. I'm talking like 50, 60 million polys. I use the bounding boxes if I just need to move something around. Or um, flat colors. Flat colors don't really work with... There you go. Uh, flat colors is great if you want to like see a silhouette. For example, you just want to see how something would look like this. Not with a flat color, this could always look like a building or something. Um, hidden line I tend to never use. Um, it looks like that it will just draw out the lines, but whenever they get interrupted, they will not continue. While um, they will do that probably uh, with some other pieces. Um, the one that I'm mostly working on is if I go to default shading, I always turn on edges and faces. And this will just show my edges over here that you can see. And um, yeah, once again, you can change these colors inside the viewport. But of course, when you select something, then those edges become a lot more clear. So I don't need to often set them stronger. Uh, viewport background here, we can set it from a plain color also. To like a gradient color you can of course also do this in your settings display settings um i never touch this stuff so and the wireframe override is of course just showing the wireframe which uh, wouldn't really work well like this but of course here see so it will just show you actual wireframes for example don't worry if i ever show you something like that we will go over those things later on and that is it for the viewport settings so yeah they are quite extensive um, but they are very useful to use and just set up once and then just forget about it.